This is the Range Rover Sport. Now to call this thing Sport is a bit like putting Nike swooshes on your wellies. Yeah, <laughs> a touch of a lie. And we'll get onto that later in the review in the driving section. Now, Land Rover actually updated this car, so it's got a new bumper, new headlights, new rear bumper, new spoiler. There's some changes inside, which I'll explain in a bit. And it starts from £64,000, but if you go to CarWow, you can save an average of £3,000 on a Range Rover Sport. Now, if you want to see how much you can save on this car, or any new car for that matter, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen to go to CarWow. The big news here on the inside of the updated Range Rover Sport is the fact that you get the infotainment system from the Velar. So it consists of three screens. So there's this top screen here, which is very wide, and this controls all your main infotainment functions. So your satellite navigation, your phone, your media, your Bluetooth, and all that sort of stuff. And you can swipe between different menus and things like that. Below it is a screen which controls your climate control, your seats and various vehicle functions. And you actually operate the climate by turning this dial here and you can switch between the fan, the heating and the heating for the seats as well. Then over here, you have a widescreen digital display for the driver, which you operate using these buttons here. So what do I think of the system? Well, it's all right, you know. I don't think it's quite as responsive as the screens that you get with BMWs and Audis and Mercedes. And some of the menus can be a little bit confusing. The screen down here is all right as well, but the icons can be a little bit small, which means having to take your eyes off the road for too long when you're driving, which isn't great. What's also not great is the fact that this system doesn't come with Android Auto nor Apple CarPlay. <laughs> now for my full detailed review of the infotainment system and to have another look around the cabin, click on the pop-out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen for my detailed infotainment video review. Now in terms of standard equipment, the HSC car gets stuff like 20 inch alloy wheels, you get leather seats, you get a Meridian sound system. Now if you upgrade to the Dynamic, you then get even larger alloy wheels and various shiny bits of satiny trim around the cabin which make it feel even posher. If you move up then to the top of the range autobiography, that adds stuff like heat and cooling for the seats. You also get a panoramic sunroof and adaptive cruise control, but that does add to the price. So this is the autobiography model and it's got the V8 diesel engine and some other bits and pieces. And the list price of this car is actually 98,000 pounds. But I plugged the details into CarWow and I got an offer back for 94,000 pounds. Every little bit helps, I think. But does this car feel like a 90,000 pound vehicle here on the inside in terms of quality? Well, do you know what? I think it does. So the design is nice and chunky. It looks pretty cool. I like the way that you've got leather on the dash, on the door tops. And I can't really find a cheap feeling bit of plastic anywhere in this car. There is one place actually, it's just down here on the side of the seats, but that's it. However, you do occasionally touch that when you're adjusting the seat. But other than that, yeah, the quality is really good. And there's some touches I really, really like about this car as well. And they all, for some reason, have something to do with mirrors. But that could just be because I'm a bit vain. So for instance, I like the control panel for the side mirrors. It's just one unit, nice and simple, very clean design. I like the fact you've got a frameless rear view mirror. But my favorite bit is this, look the vanity mirror, when you slide it open, it's got these little lights and it, and it kind of reminds me of the mirror that you get in a theatre changing room. I'm ready for my close-up now, darling. That's enough of that. Now, in terms of the seating position, yeah, Range Rovers always have great seating positions, so you do sit nice and high. But in the Sport, you feel a bit more cocooned in it than a normal Range Rover because of the wraparound dash design. And yeah, you sit more in it, but you still feel like you're sitting on top of it, if that kind of makes sense. The thing I particularly love are the captain's chairs where you have these armrests. So yes, you can drive along feeling very, very important. And there's plenty of adjustment in the seats as well. Yes, I could do this for ages, but you'll get bored. And you have electric operation of the steering column. Also, the steering wheel in the Sport is slightly smaller than that in the normal Range Rover to make it feel more sporty. In terms of the seats themselves, do you know what? I find them a little bit on the firm side, so they can give you a bit of an achy bum after a while, but I do like this look. You can alter the headrest, get yourself nice and comfy. Finally, we come to storage, and it's pretty good. So you've got this little extra glove box up here, though there isn't really that much room to store stuff. But just think of it as a bonus, because under here, you've got a normal glove box. Now, under here, you have 
a fridge. Look at that. Plus there's a USB input there and there and a 12 volt socket as well. I like the way they've cut away this area because it means that when you put it down, you don't snag your cable for your mobile phone. Under here, you have your cup holders and they're big enough to hold your coffee cup. Speaking of which, underneath here is a little storage area where you can actually store your favorite brand of coffee. How cool it is that? What I'm not so keen on though are the door bins. They're a big enough size and you can fit a big bottle in them. The problem is that the way the door handle sticks out, it means there's not enough room between the handle and the seat to get your bottle of water out. So you have to actually open the door to get it out, which obviously you can't do when you're driving. Now I'm gonna use this to illustrate the practicality in the back, but first I wanna show you this. So this is quite a high car. So to get in, you do have to kind of like jump up a little bit, which isn't gonna be great for kids or elderly people. Now the car does actually lower automatically when you open the door on its air suspension to make it as low as possible. But this still is, like I say, a bit of a leap to get in. In terms of the cubby spaces then, well, the door bins are quite big here as well, but once again, you have the same issue with the seat and the big door handles that you have to just, uh, yes, that did fit. Whew. In terms of space for adults, well, look, knee room's good, headroom is good, but it's not all great. For instance, these rear seats seem quite low, so your knees are a little bit high, which isn't that comfortable. Another issue I have is the fact that you can't really fit your feet under the chairs in front unless they jack them all the way up, so you can't stretch out as much as you can in the back of an Audi Q8. You can though recline the rear seats if you want to, which is good. And if you need to carry three people at once in the back, this is better than the Audi. Part of the reason is because you've got a completely flat floor, so you don't have to worry about where everyone puts their feet. There's loads of room. Also, the square body means that those on the outside seat don't have the head rubbing on the corners there like that, which is handy. In terms of other bits of practicality, well, you've got some airplane style folders there as well, which feel high quality and they're sturdy enough to hold a heavy iPad securely. There's a little storage area here, which I'm not entirely sure what it's there for. Maybe it's perfect for your chocolate bar like that. You've got your climate controls here as well, digitally operated. There's USB import so that everyone can charge their mobile devices. And there's even in this particular car, look, I've got a normal three pin socket so you can just plug in your laptop as well. If I fold this down, look, I can create through loading so I can carry longer items and two people in the back. And you probably just saw it if I just put that back up and pull this down. You have an armrest here, you've got some cup holders and look at this. Hmm, I wonder what that's for. Once again, I had to think about it and I think the reason for that is that you can fill it like this, look, fill it with water. And then when you're eating messy crisp, you know, the, the type, the, well, stain your fingers you can swirl them off in there hmm that's much better thank you Range Rover anyway let's move on to the back so the capacity well it's about 20% less than you get with a BMW X6 or an Audi Q8 but it's not all bad news because it's actually a very good square usable boot with enough space really and there's no load lip so you can just slide things out easily and there is a reason for that reduced capacity. It's because underneath here, there's no storage because you've got a spare wheel. Also, you can get this car with seven seats and the two rear seats fold away under there as well. If you have that seven seat version, obviously you don't get a spare wheel then, but still it means there's a trade-off for that slightly reduced capacity. And there's lots of useful features in here. So you've got tethering points, hooks. We've got the 12 volt socket there. Also, this particular car has a three pin socket there, so you can actually plug in a normal vacuum cleaner and really give the boot a good vacuuming. Now, if you want to fold down the rear seats, unfortunately, yeah, you have to go around to here to then fold them down. I'll just do the other side as well, so you can see the kind of space you get with the seats all folded down. It's quite big as you can see. It's not completely flat the floor, but it's not too bad. And like I said, the air suspension lowers to help make it easier for you to get in the car and you can also lower it to make it easier to load stuff into the boot. Alternatively, what you can do is raise it up if you actually want to use the boot as a viewing platform to get a good view, I don't know, of a park or wherever you're having a picnic. Oh, looks as though the car is pleased to see me. 
actually yeah you can use this tow hook as well it's electrically operated it's an optional extra of course but yeah it's handy if you have a caravan so for more information on this car's practicality such as how much stuff you can fit in its boot how easy it is to fit a child's seat and what it's like with three adults in the back click on the pop out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen to watch my in-depth practicality video that was an unnecessary innuendo i apologize now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. The rear windows only go down this far, so you can't really rest your arm on the window ledge. And you might find that just a touch disappointing. Depending where the sun is, you can get loads of reflections on this lower screen, so it's even harder to operate the functions when you're driving. Seeing as this is a large practical car, you'd think they'd figure out a way to somehow store the retractable load cover under here when you're not using it but yeah they haven't the controls for the digital driver's display are pressed to operate but also they're touch sensitive as well only the touch sensitive isn't very good sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so you never know where you are with it sometimes it just moves the function and you didn't mean to because you just brushed it and then other times you brush it and it does nothing it's so annoying these vents in the bonnet are actually fake. I mean, look at this. They don't go anywhere. Hmm. How lame is that? Yes, Land Rover, there is no fooling. The car wow, stick of truth. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow five cool features. You can choose the interior ambient lighting color. Yeah, there's a selection for your preference or your mood. Do you know what? I'm feeling a little bit blue today because this car's going back to Land Rover. Reversing a trailer into a position can be very, very tricky, but with the advanced trailer control assist, you can actually use a reversing camera and then move this around to set the direction that you want the trailer to go and it will just put it exactly in the right place without you having to kind of do the crazy calculation with it moving in the opposite direction that you're turning the wheel. It means that even an idiot like me can do it. Thanks to lots of aluminium in its construction, this generation of Range Rover Sport is almost half a ton lighter than the previous generation of Range Rover Sport. Mind you, it still weighs almost two and a half tons. If a cyclist is approaching the side of the car and you get to open the door, that will flash yellow if they're in your blind spot so you don't accidentally open the door into them. To save you stabbing around to try and find the button while you're driving with the blind for the sunroof, it actually has gesture control. and You can just wave your hand, almost dismissing it, look. And it just does its thing. Ah, let the light flood in. Now it's time to hit the road. There's just something unique about how a Range Rover feels to drive, and this sport is no different. You kind of feel very, very important, and in town you can like look down on the plebs and the normal cars from your lofty perch, and it's sort of satisfying in a, in a slightly sad way. And another thing that's quite good is that well, the car's quite square, so even though it's big, you can judge where the corners are, but it still feels like a bit of a behemoth to like negotiate around busy city streets. And when you get through gaps in traffic, you feel yourself kind of like sucking yourself in to, to help get you through the gaps. And when you go into height restrictors, you, you, you also duck because you're worried about hitting your head. So yeah, not the easiest thing to drive in town. Doesn't help that the steering is kind of quite heavy and slow. So there's lots of wheel twirling if you get things wrong and need to do a U-turn or go around a mini roundabout or at those spiral ramps that you find in multi-storey car parks. Now, you get air suspension as standard and it's really good at dealing with bigger bumps. You know, you can pummel speed humps back into the ground, but then smaller imperfections in the road, it seems to just fidget around and settle it. And the best way I can describe it is that it's a bit like when you're walking barefoot. It's dead easy to walk over boulders because they're nice and big. But when you walk over small pebbles, it hurts your feet and you kind of walk over them very gingerly, like you're having a really aggressive foot massage. However, when you get on the motorway at speed, it all settles down. It just feels planted, a bit like you're driving a tank. These seats, though, they're not the comfiest. And I'm noticing a bit of wind noise from around here. But other than that, yeah, easy for doing long distances in and you feel very safe, which is important. In terms of engines, well, there's four-cylinder, six-cylinder, and eight-cylinder diesels and petrols, and you can even get a plug-in hybrid, which can drive an electric power alone for short distances. Now, this particular car is the V8 diesel, and it's fairly punchy, 
and it makes a sort of V8 warble as well when you're driving it hard though I think that might be kind of synthetic and pumped through the speakers. I wouldn't actually go for this engine, partly because of the economy. The V6 diesel feels pretty much as quick to drive and it will get better economy. As for the gearbox, it's not the most responsive, but it's not the worst. And when you're just cruising along, it's pretty good at just blending those gears together. Now though, I think it's time we talked about the elephant in the room. And it's the fact that this car has the word sport in its name because ironically it is probably the least sporty of all these coupe style suvs when you're on a twisty road it's surprising actually how flat it does remain in the corners but there's only so much you can ask of it before its front tires lose grip and it starts to just plow on but as long as you just drive it a bit more sedately it's, yeah it's fine it's more than adequate what I can't complain about though is this car's ability to go off-road because it's way ahead of all the other SUVs when it comes to mixing it on the rough stuff. I mean, it's a proper off-road of this thing. And what I can do is put the gearbox into low ratio mode, lock the central differential and change the different modes depending on whether I'm driving on sand, muddy ruts or just normal off-roading. There is even a low speed cruise control for when you're driving off-road so you don't actually have to do it yourself, which really, quite frankly, when you pay this sort of money, you shouldn't have to, should you? Finally though, I should point out this car has a wading depth of 85 centimeters, so this little puddle here should pose no problem. And even if it was a lot deeper, you've actually got special sonar a bit like a whale which can measure the depth of the water that you're going through so you don't accidentally wade into the Marianas Trench. For more information and to see how much you can save on the revised Range Rover Sport or any new car for that matter, click on the pop-out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen to go to CarWow. So then, what's my verdict? on the Range Rover Sport, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Range Rover Sport. Okay, so there are other sporty luxury SUVs which are a bit better to drive and better value, but it's still a very lovely thing. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it and share it. Also click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the song Range Rover Sport on the stereo.